it's like really daunting to read after everyone because that was just so phenomenal. I'm so grateful for all the folks who read um, and for being in this anthology. Um, it's probably like the coolest thing I've done ever. Uh, like cool points, I need some of those. So uh, I appreciate being included in this. Um, I wanted to start by reading um, a, a poem from this. And also real quick, Miles, where in rural Ohio are you from? I have to know if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I'm from Alliance. It's like in the Northeast corner. Yo, I'm from Northeastern where Ohio are you from? too. Uh, it's a very small township, but it's like 20 minutes from Kent State and, Hir and like 10 minutes from Hiram College. Okay, uh, yeah. I don't know, yeah. 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 Word, <laughs> uh, nice to meet you. <laughs> I, yeah. Um, this poem is actually written about like being on the playground uh, in my rural Ohio upbringing. So shout out to Miles, shout out to rural Ohio. It's called Sometimes Boyhood. Sometimes Boyhood, hovering their mouths like two men moments before they turn on each other. That is how the grass smells, need between boys. I wanted a love like a shared look, so relieved to be touching, so angry it took so long, too easy to rehearse into fragility. As a boy, I couldn't hide a single soft thing, round with lemon skin under her shirt, silken folds of fat. The boy thinks she is a canal for shame, where goodness ends, the scent of new blood, a red scout of longing. Through her private dimension, the boy tables girlhood, and the sweat is good sweat, a flock of braying gestures, shaving September grains, a cunning hunt for each other's touch, two men sparring over who could end the other's suffering first, bliss shame from the body. Was I not one of them, disarming a denim ilk, praying his sword would land amidst my vast acreage? Um, so I'm going to read just two more poems. Um, it was really great hearing your television poems, Faye. Um, and I'm going to read some television poems too. Um, I hope that's cool. Uh, this first one is called Ars Cinema. I have no new ideas about film. Oh wait, I'm sorry, I wanted to say this before I wrote, said it. Um, it's actually, I, I uh, was commissioned by MITS, this press that records your whole uh, poem. So if you like this poem and you want to see how it was made, check out uh, MITS in March. Um, that's why it's so weird, because I was like, the stakes don't exist, because it's just a weird thing. So then I wrote this, all right, um, our cinema. I have no new ideas about film. I just know I don't always like being fed three severed heads. I need some body, some bone. Drop me into her cornea and let me see the way her light hits. I need it to be indulgent and tattered, marrow with meat. Some stories use others as a bridge, others right on the back of another, parsing hairs as a flea would for blood. I want the story to be like ice cream, all the hot girls eating me in August. Queens make all the media I like, so it might get a little tragic. I was on the drug in Love and Other Drugs for a while. I was proud to be on what was peddled, especially since Prozac made me suicidal. And I'm looking for any excuse to be closer to Jake. For instance, I wore a ranch hand blue denim shirt today and I wore black frames with a bisexual swagger. I know I'm the main character because pe people keep leaning into my affect and dignifying it. I will be as many as I have ever been. I could be an automaton threatening my peers with lines from Shakespeare and I'd still be here watching myself in my reflection on the screen. Allow me to curate for you a film about my feelings starring Ruth Wilson's face, Andre Brower's eyelids, Jeffrey Wright's hairline, Jake's anything, and Viola Davis's cheeks. I knew Zoloft wasn't working when even television became unpalatable. Even still, I start a new series and write No New Myths, SMH, in the margin of my grid paper. My film will have everything the others don't. The actors assemble and I tell them to say the first thing that comes to mind at once. 
I never say cut so the movie just keeps living with us in our homes like an old friend. They never know how to end movies. I swear to God, it's like some people have never experienced disassociation and grasp not the importance of color, chemistry, and syntax. Ground my experience in a color palette at the very least. I was counting on being so prepossessed. The last time I finished a movie, I'm not kidding you, it ended with a bang. Thanks y'all. Um, it's really fun to be here with y'all and thanks for listening. Um, this is my last poem. And in that vein, uh, this is, um, this is, I've been writing like towards TV shows in particular more so. Um, so this one's about Westworld. Uh, the muse in question is Maeve. If you like that context, if you don't pretend I didn't say it, uh, here we go. It's called, it's not like the movies. Oh, and only season one because season two and three, I pretend don't exist because they really like took a Sestina and then like tried to turn it into like a pop song and I just don't appreciate what they did to yes we're recording and I'm talking about this but I just have to say I don't agree with what happened to season two and three um except for like the first two episodes of season two but anyway um I digress this is called it's not like the movies to breach the underworld is more a lateral drift approximating barriers however diaphanous you begin to see exact forms matriculate posed down like cars in a lot. This is where your people exist without function or care. I don't need to hear Tom York's voice to call this dirge existential, though your crisis is more compelling. Bodies like yours can neither stop dying nor succumb to death entirely. What is refusal to programmed consent? I wonder as your eyes move to the figure of a man, suspended taut and white as a sheet, blood loops through a tube and into him, thawing the man with life as a technician initiates heartbeat. The stringed instruments in the foreground swell as though their fervor is what pulls the blood to his atriums. In this lab of artificial life, a buffalo learns to walk, a horse with a halo overhead is steadied for labor. Two women embrace to fuck while their voyeurs inspire a clutch of revulsion in your lip. You finally awoken only to find you live on a billboard. Your tormentors merely an your torment merely an agitator's vacation. I touch the screen that holds you and fractures you and I. The difference between us, I was born, you were made. Still somehow I know the feeling. Someone killed you one thousand times because they were scared of dying once. Thanks.